Dr. Prasoon Bandiopadhyay. He is an architect with six years of experience in IT parks, institutional spaces and retail design. He graduated in the year 2011 from National Institute of Technology, Patna. He joined L&T Construction in 2011 and worked in various multi-million projects spanning from various IT parks to institutional spaces. Presently, he serves as a lead architect at Future Research Design Company. Welcome to UGC lecture series. This is AR6013, lecture number 3 for construction technology. We are on unit 2, that is construction practice. So in this lecture, we will go through the modern construction materials. So we will go through durable concrete, high performance concrete, self compacting concrete, concrete with mineral admixtures, we will go through fly ash, we will go through concrete masonry units, we will go through glass, metal, plastics, ceramics, foam and composite wood. Starting with durable concrete. Now concrete durability can be achieved in a very holistic way. In this context, there are large number of materials in market which facilitate durability in concrete. Apart from the materials, the construction processes have also undergone changes with a view of improving durability to the finished concrete. The durability of concrete is defined as its ability to resist weathering action, chemical attack, abrasion or any other process of deterioration. Durable concrete will retain its original form, quality and serviceability when exposed to the environment. The concrete ingredients, their proportioning, interactions between them, placing and curing practices and the service environment all determine the durability and life of concrete. For example, sulphates and chlorides in seawater require the use of low permeability concrete to minimize steel corrosion and sulphate attack. A cement resistant to sulphate exposure is helpful. Proper concrete cover over reinforced steel must be provided and the water cement ratio should not exceed 0 0.40. So what happens is we can, in, we can put these admixtures in the concrete and we can increase the durability of the concrete. So when we put the admixtures that do not react, we, we, we put admixtures with the, with the kind of concrete we are going to use in various uh, circumstances. For example, if we are using uh, a concrete in, uh, in, in, in an atmospheric condition which is more prone to uh, salt, which is more humid in nature, which is more dry in nature, which is uh, more prone to acidic contact. So in all these cases, we use some admixtures, uh, some minerals, some uh, chemicals, probably sulphates, chlorides, uh, all these minerals, when we add with concrete during its preparation, it increases the durability of the concrete. Another material in concrete is high performance concrete. So in response to widespread cracking of concrete structures, the construction processes have moved towards the use of high performance concrete that we also called as HPC mixes. The high performance concrete is a concrete mixture which possesses high durability and high strength when compared to conventional concrete. This concrete contains one or more cementitious materials such as fly ash, silica fume or ground granulated blast furnace slag and usually it is a super plasticizer. High performance concrete was introduced in India initially for the reconstruction of the pre-stressed concrete dome of Kaiga atomic power plant uh, followed for the parts of the reactors at Tarapur and Rajasthan. Subsequently, a number of bridges and flyovers have been introduced with high performance concrete up to M75 grade in different parts of India. Self-compacting con concrete. Self-compacting concrete that is called as SCC which leaves from the batching plant is in a semi-fluid state and is placed into the form formwork with, without the use of vibrators. Now due to its fluidity, the self-compacting concrete is able to find its way into the formwork and in between the reinforcement and get self-compacted in this process. The SCC as we call as self-compacting concrete is particularly useful for components of structures which are heavily reinforced. The fluidity is realized by modifying the normal mix components. In addition to cement, 
coats and fine aggregates water special new generation polymer polymer based admixtures are used to increase the fluidity of the concrete without increasing the water content so it is not necessary that to increase the fluidity of concrete we have to uh, put a lot of water what we do is we maintain the quantity of water but we put other admixtures like polymer based admixtures to increase the fluidity of the concrete that we can do without increasing the water content now mixing concrete with mineral admixtures from being a product made of three or four materials that is cement aggregates and water today a typical durable concrete consists of six or more materials the use of low water cement ratio enables a reduction in the volume and size of capillary voids in concrete this alone is not sufficient to reduce the cement based content of concrete which is the source of micro cracking from thermal shrinkage and drying shrinkage so another uh, reason why we do not prefer using more water is because when the what happens when concrete dries up it causes uh, with when concrete with more water dries up it it causes cracks so why these cracks happen is because the water vapor they tend to evaporate from this concrete and thus it 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 causes cracks in the concrete so to reduce that we use add mixtures uh maybe mineral add mixtures maybe uh synthetic based add mixtures maybe polycarbonate based add mixtures and and this is how the concrete uh the the durability of the concrete is increased so in this case in 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 this in this section is the concrete with mineral add mixtures so when we add the mineral add mixtures with the concrete mix the durability increases to reduce the cement based content both the water content and the cement content must be reduced as much as possible the concrete mixes with fewer micro cracks can be produced by blending the cement with mineral admixtures either in the batching plant or in the cement plant this enhances the service life of concrete structures in a cost effective manner now fly ash fly ash brick is a building material specifically masonry units containing class c fly ash and water now how is fly ash obtained fly ash is obtained from the thermal power plants it's a by product of the thermal power plant that we reuse as fly ash bricks for for building construction so in this case when we use fly ash bricks we are also using a product that we are recycling in the building construction industry compressed at 28 megapascals and cured for 24 hours in a 66 degree steam bath then toughened with an air entertainment agent these bricks last for more than 100 100 freeze thaw cycles the finished product is a lighter block less than 40% the weight of conventional bricks but they provide similar strengths you can see in this picture these are fly ash bricks and these are highly compacted building units they are used instead of uh, they are used in replacement of bricks of conventional bricks earth bricks but they provide the same strength now the fly ash bricks have many important properties we can fast track the construction process with fly ash bricks because they are available in various dimensions even in the bigger dimensions now they have uh, equal strength as compared to bricks as i said earlier and and most of and most importantly they are made up of fly ash and not uh, not of earth so that is why we are uh, we are actually using a recycled product so as i said the advantages of fly ash blocks it reduces dead load on structures due to its lightweight the dimensions are which are available are 230 mm cross 110 mm cross 70 mm the same number of bricks will cover more area than clay bricks so that's what that's what i said due to its increasing size we need more less number of fly ash bricks than the uh, clay bricks we need more clay bricks to cover an area but the fly ash uh, but the uh, the necessity of the number of fly ash brick modules will be lesser now it has high fire insulation due to its high strength it practically there is practically no breakage during transport and use due to a uniform size of bricks mortar required for joints and plaster also reduces by almost 50% thus it's a main cost saving point due to lower water penetration seepage of water through bricks is considerably reduced gypsum plaster can be directly applied on these bricks without a backing coat of lime plaster because these bricks have a plain texture 
so it it easily yeah, so so gypsum plaster can be easily applied on top of it we do not need a lime plaster to make it smooth again these bricks do not require soaking in water for 24 hours so this just a sprinkling of water before use is enough so that saves a lot of manpower the disadvantages of fly ash blocks the mechanical strength of fly ash blocks are low but this can be rectified by adding marble waste or mortar between the blocks limitation of size only modular sizes can be produced large size will have more breakages so these are the disadvantages of fly ash bricks concrete masonry units a concrete masonry unit is a standard sized rectangular block used in building construction concrete blocks are made from cast concrete for example portland cement and aggregate usually sand and fine gravel for high density blocks Lower density blocks may use industrial wastes such as fly ash or bottom ash as an aggregate. Lightweight blocks can also be produced using autoclaved aerated concrete. Now these concrete masonry units are available in the market in various forms. One are normal dense concrete masonry units, a solid block. Another another typology are the uh, the concrete blocks which have cavity inside. And another type of uh, typology and another type of concrete masonry units available are called AAC blocks that are called autoclaved aerated concrete. Now, when we are intending to do a, ca a cavity wall construction or in general wall construction, if we are using our concrete masonry units with cavity inside, it produces, it gives us thermal benefit, it gives us uh, it gives us thermal resistance, it gives us acoustic resistance. So, it is a win-win situation for us. You know, it can be, it is a very good replacement of uh, conventional bricks. The second thing is, when we are using the second form is autocla autoclaved aerated concrete blocks that are called AAC blocks. So, these are very porous in nature, but the strength wise it is good, but the, 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 if you see the concrete blocks they are very porous so due to the uh, due to the porousness of these blocks uh, we get a very good thermal benefit as well as acoustic benefit also so these are the new building modules that can be used for uh, building construction the next material is glass now glass has become a very important material which is used in construction as we have seen more and more buildings coming up with glass facades it is generally made from mixtures of sand and silicates and is very brittle. Now glass finds major usage in beautification of structure and keeping the temperatures regularized. Now glass can be used in construction in various forms, you know. One is insulated glazing, more commonly known as double glazing, consists of two glass window planes, window panes separated by a vacuum or gas filled space to reduce heat transfer across a part of the building envelope. So, an insulated glazing is nothing but two panels of glass with an air gap in between. Now, insulated glazing glasses can also come up with coating of various materials uh, from, the, from the internal side of the glass panes to regulate the temperatures inside. It, it also regulates our U value that in turn reduces the temperature of the ambient temperature inside and also it gives us various good uh, uh, shading coefficient to regulate the temperature and also and it and it also gives us a lot of respite from the glare of the sun laminated laminated glass is a type of safety glass that holds together when shattered in the event of breaking it is held in place by an interlayer typically of polyvinyl butyryl pvb or ethylene vinyl acetate between its two or more layers of glass so, a laminated glass is nothing but two glass panes which, which have a, a layer of polycarbonate sheet, it is either PVB or EVA sandwiched in between two, two of those glass panes. So, what happens when glass breaks, it does not get shattered and does not harm an individual. Then toughened or tempered glass, the toughened or tempered glass is a type of safety glass processed by controlled thermal or chemical treatments to increase its strength compared with a normal glass. Tempering puts the outer surfaces into compression and the inner surfaces into tension. Such stresses cause the glass when broken 
to crumble into smaller granular chunks instead of splintering into jagged shards as plate glass that is annealed glass creates the granular chunks are less likely to cause injury what happens when we break a tempered glass it breaks into pieces but it it becomes very small pieces that are very safe but not very sharp and you know and ir uh, irregular large pieces that can uh, cause injury to a person annealed glass is the most common glass used in windows annealed glass is also known as a standard sheet of floor glass annealing is actually a process of slowly cooling glass to relieve internal stresses after it is formed now how are these glasses how are how are this these glass glass panes stored at site glass is generally stored vertically on its edge in dry conditions with the storage is on the short side or long side that depends on the available space we have at site the factors to consider when storing glass on its edge first of all the glass should not be in contact with with any hard substance that is concrete stone ferrous materials or other broken glasses if we do this this will minimize the risk of damage and breakage and can be implemented by cladding all supporting structures help you know which are used to hold the glass together by with timber felt rubber material etc care should be taken to ensure that all the nails screws countersunks which are on the surface that are holding the glass together uh, which are coming in contact with the glass which they they are properly uh, covered with timber felt or any other soft material so that they do not hamper the glass or they do not break the glass so that's why we should always ensure that that the supporting bearers are smooth and clean now angle of inclination of the glass transportable racks barrows trolleys and stillages can be kept as at 5 to 6 degrees maximum if the angle is increased above 6 degrees it will tend to put extra weight on the back sheets and make the sheet separation more difficult to achieve and in turn while using the glass in the construction sites you you it's you can you can break the glass it's more prone to breakage the following is a list of recommended practices for the storage of glass on site the glass deliveries should be coordinated to minimize on site storage durations the subcontracts the subcontractor should work with general contractor or builder to select an on site under roof storage location that avoid direct crane and water runoff the work areas of other trades areas of high traffic and minimized material movement should be ensured and handling of other materials and activities near the glass uh, where the glass storage is should be reduced individual sheets or cases of glass and pre-glazed materials should be secured blocked and braced to prevent falls blocks or supports should ensure that the bottom edge of materials will be kept well above potential sources of water storage of glass against walls should be avoided unless it can be determined that the wall is suitably sound for the task for example single sheets of glass that still can be can be suitably secured storage area should provide secure temporary covering that prevents direct water flow but ensures ventilation and stops condensation built up on glass that may cause uh, that, that may that can cause slippage when you try to you, you know lift the glass and the glass may fall and break we should ensure that stored materials are not exposed to activities of other trades such as welding painting insulating etc that that happens on site and we should daily inspect that's an important point we should daily inspect the 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 place where the glass is stored the next material is metal metal such as steel and aluminum alloys are used in taller structures and are used as structural frameworks for these skyscrapers its advantages are strength and flexibility while its primary enemy is we all know corrosion now how is metal used in the construction industry first of all its steel grids incorporation of steel frames made construction of skyscraper skyscrapers possible here vertical columns and horizontal i beams form a grid this supports other elements of the building that are attached to the grid it is used to better withstand the stress of the structure bolts and fasteners are used to connect beams to the columns i beams in the center are usually wider and so more resistant to bending moments wide sheet of steel is used to cover the top of the frame as for the floor surface 
precast concrete is a popular option. Due to steel softening with high temperatures, fire resistant elements are usually incorporated. So steel is used very widely in construction industry. We get steel eye sections, we get, we get from, from structural elements like columns and beams. We also get, uh, we also use uh, interior elements like balusters, we use steel doors. Uh, so steel is an important element now for the construction industry. We use fixtures, we use fixing, you know, all fixing materials, uh, we use joineries, we use joinery hardwares, windows. So steel is an important material in the construction industry as of now. Metal roofs. Metal roofs can be, can be fabricated from galvanized steel or a mixture of zinc, aluminium and silicon coated steel. Stainless steel, lead and copper can also be used. The main advantage of such roofs is the durability. Metal usually gets epoxy or ceramic coated in order to prevent the roof from rust and damage caused by water. So metal roofs are a common sight now. Reinforced concrete. Steel is used in reinforced cement concrete. Rebars are usually made from twisted strands with anchoring ridges. Then fixing and fasteners. As I said earlier, fixings and fasteners are often made of stainless steel. They are widely used in automotive, aerospace and other manufacturing industries. One more area where this is very critical uh, is the glazing industry where steel fasteners provide required strength to the glass facade. They are crucial for stability and safety of construction and civil engineering in general. There are many different types of fixings and fasteners for specific types of construction. Next material is aluminium. Aluminium is used for cladding on facade. Aluminium can be clad on the facade as aluminium composite panels that we call as ACP or sheet aluminium cladding with required framework or supports that can be of steel or aluminium. So aluminium can be used as a facade material in various ways. We can use sheet aluminium cladding with powder coating on it, with various textures on it, with various prints on it or we can use it as aluminium composite panels. Now what are aluminium composite panels? These are two sheets of aluminium with a polycarbonate based substance in between, sandwiched in between two aluminium panels. So these provide excellent cladding material on facade that are when we can turn it into any shape and form we want with uh, and, on, and these aluminium composite panels ACP are cladded on uh, a sub a structure a grid structure a support structure of which are either of steel or aluminium a framework now aluminium is used as a part of structural glazing the mullions the transforms uh, the, the transoms everything are widely made up of aluminium the doors and windows aluminium joinery are a common sight along with steel doors today they are specially used for fire protection durability and soundproof doors etc Plastics. Plastics are widely used substance. It's a synth it is a synthetic or semi-synthetic organic, con organic condensation or polymerization product that can be molded in various forms and differs in heat tolerance, hardness and resiliency. It is cost effective and owing to the qualities like ease of manufacturing, versatility and imperviousness to water, it is extensively used as a building material now. Following are the areas of application. Facade cladding. Now plastics can be used as a polycarbonate sheet on the facade cladding and as a replacement of glass. Indoor usage. Wall cladding, electrical and lighting fixtures are all made up of plastics nowadays. Furniture. Since it has a property of molding the shape we want, plastics are widely used as furniture. Storage spaces. We get cabinets, we get closets, we get, what, we get everything what we can think of from plastic. Polycarbonate sheets can also be used, used as a roofing material. Next material is ceramics. It is a tile or fixture made up of clay pottery firing in kins and mainly used for flooring, ceiling, walls, countertops and other coverings in the building. Not only that, ceramics can also be used as a cladding material, maybe in the interior or in the exterior because the, the ceramic tiles used in the exterior, uh, used in the exterior do not fade away with sun or do not fade away with time. They, they keep their sheen intact. 
and they are available in market with various textures, with various colors and also it can be used as a replacement of stone cladding on the facade or even metal cladding, yes. Foam, foam are mainly used for insulation purposes owing to its properties of maintaining temperatures, being flexible and light in weight, it is compressed between wood and cement to give the desired effect. So foam is a product that can be used as an insulation material on the pipes, on the service pipes and also it can be used as an insulation, insulation materials between two uh, physical components. For example, if you are using two physical components, uh, one is concrete and one is metal or two metals side by side, there is a fine joint in between that and we want it to be insulated so that the two, two components do not rub against each other, we can use foam. Composite wood. Now we all know that we cannot use wood on the exterior. We won't prefer to use wood on the exterior. It loses its, it, it creates, it's more prone to warping and then if you do polishing on it, it loses its polish in no time. So engineered wood, also called composite wood or also called man-made wood or, or, uh, or manufactured wood includes a range of derivative wood products which are manufactured by bending, by binding or fixing the strands, particles, fibers or veneers or boards of wood together with adhesives or other methods of fixation to form composite materials. So these composite woods can be used as an external facade material. Not only that, it can be used as flooring material, it can be used as cladding material and it resembles wood. So what we learned today? We learned about modern construction materials, we learned about various materials like glass, metals, composite woods, we, we, we also got an alternative to brick in the form of concrete masonry units uh, with, with cavities, without cavities at AAC blocks. Uh, we, we learned how they are produced and we also learned their use, uses in construction briefly. So the questions, list out at least 10 modern construction materials with brief description about each one of them. Explain what are the different types of glass used in modern construction technology. What is fly ash? What are the advantages of fly ash bricks over conventional bricks? Thank you.